to the world, but broadcast video is live, and I believe that's on my uh, home page. I'm going to click record on my side um, and say hello again to the people watching at other you know time jumped positions in the future. My name is Sam Joseph. I'm an associate professor at Hawaii Pacific University, and as you as you will know, um, I am uh, also a uh, facilitator for the current summer 2013 offerings of edX 169.1 and 169.2. Hello, Doug. Great to have you with us. Um, so um, I think we'll probably have a you know, t turnover of people coming coming in and out. Um, people, I guess, are getting more familiar with the, with the Google Hangouts. Um, there's the usual things of how people mute themselves, unmute themselves, uh, turn video on and off. Um, I guess what I will start off by doing... Uh, as I often do in these things, once you've got into the Hangout, the Hangout's great, you can see my face, woohoo, what a, what a big, uh, wonderful trip that is for everybody. Um, the critical thing really is to be able to do screen share. So I'm just going to show you how uh, I do that. Um, so I'm going to go to the, the, the sort of series of buttons on the extreme left of the Hangout, and um, I'm going to click on that screen share button, and then it's going it's to give me a series of options about what I actually uh, screen share, and that will be you know, I can sh share my entire desktop. I can share individual browser windows. I'm going to share this, I think, here. Is that now sharing? So uh, this should be is that we're going to be talking about. To the button to the top. Here it is. There we go. Yes, part one due, of course, uh, this coming Thursday. Um, and so I don't know if everybody, if everybody in the that they're able to do their own screen share because the, the real value from these Google Hangouts is not being able to see into other people's living rooms, as much as we may enjoy that. Um, the, um, the real value is to be able to actually share uh, your, your screen and show other people the code that you're working on and say, look, I'm getting this error message and I'm stuck in this place and it's making me want to cry. And, uh, you know, but actually being able to talk through that uh, step by step and get that uh, all sorted out. So does, um, I'm assuming any of you, indeed all of you, <laughs> or any of you can hear me, do you want to just try um, the, you know, making sure that we can get the screen share working and um, then, we'll, then we'll move on? Or, no, not. Um, so on, on, the, say, on the extreme left, there's three buttons, there's a series of buttons. Um, the top one is like invite people in red. Uh, the next one down is uh, the chat, you know, sort of minimizes and maximizes the chat window. Uh, I can see there, yes, Rob Jackson's been able to share a screen. Pedro's been able to share a screen. Well done. Oh, it's Jeff. Jeff, I'm seeing the screens all come up on, on, on the bottom. But, yeah, so it's the third button down on the on the left. It's sort of like a green monitor with an arrow in it. Yes, and I'm getting one from Doug as well. Fantastic. Um, and so now what you may initially be confused about in, in Google Hangouts is, right, I can, I can can. You're, you're probably all seeing my screen, which is... Sort of the default. Oh yes, and we've got one from Han King as well. Fantastic, uh, Mike Smith. I know you know how to do screen share. Um, Sergio and, and Niddy, uh, if you've got a screen to share, do go ahead to it. But what you should be able to do now is if you click on the the, uh, the row along the bottom, and you can see sort of like it's either got the video or the icon or the the screen of different people. You can click on. I'm going to click on Rob Jackson here, and so I can see Rob's been uh, using the SQL Lite interface there within the VM. I'm going to click on Pedro, and I can see Pedro's got his uh, usual fantastic, I think this is sublime, multiple uh, windows with text so small I can barely read them. Uh, let's go and have a look. Jeff's got uh, a kind of letterbox thing. I can see he's been running some, uh, looks like some cucumber tests there. Um, oh, we've got yeah, Michael, of course, we know you have a screen share. Um, and Han, Han King. Uh, yeah, now, of course, sometimes the screen share will, will come and go. I just clicked on Han King, I saw it briefly, and then it popped away. That, you know, there's there's often all kinds of lag, particularly in a big hangout like this one. It can take um, a lot of time. I can see that um, Doug there has opened a new terminal window and is seeding into the typo directory. Uh, you get the idea. I think we've um, uh, probably had as much uh, fun in the intro portion there as we as we are likely to have. Um, but so do, do take a moment to just check that you can control what you're seeing. So you know, you if you click on somebody else's uh, screen share window um, and get theirs to come up and then come back to, to mine. I can see uh, Sergio, yes, has got, uh, is looking at the auto test uh, settings there. Um, 
so I think I think yes, fantastically well done, uh, everybody getting the screen share working. You know what what I'm what I'm planning for now is that we might spend a bit of time chatting about the homework. Maybe if you if you're stuck on particular issues, we can look at that. We can talk about some of the conceptual stuff. Um, moving forward, the idea is is not necessarily that we would do loads and loads of large hangouts like this. Um, as you may have may have may or may not have seen, I guess I see. I'm just trying to go over to my other window. Can I get to? Here we go. If you, I'm going to just show you. We will just talk about a little bit about the um, pair programming community, if we can here, which I'm now displaying in my window. Of course, um, <laughs> one of the things now is that um, uh, busy. You know, off looking at the other screens. I've I have no idea if you're you're <laughs> looking at um, uh, at mine or not. But if you do look at mine, and that's why you know, if you click back on me. I'm I'm showing you the pair programming environment. I'm just gonna make sure that we've got um, the uh, the stream available to people <laughs> elsewhere. Um, I'm not sure where it's supposed to appear actually. Anyway, uh, um, here. Um, chat that's embedded throughout the site. Uh, um, Derek Coetzee. Since I'm, I'm, you know, I'm still experimenting with these uh, Google Google being broadcast. You can see. Or maybe you can see. Uh, my, my interface says it's being broadcast. Anyway, so um, yeah. So if you look at my screen, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the the pair programming uh, community. Which all uh, right, I've got two different windows. Never mind. Yeah. So you can see, and I think many of you will have found uh, this this stuff about the house through the pair programming community. Um, you can see that there's lots of people in there. All you know, can we can we people they want to pair program. I'm recommending that people create uh, events. In order to specify the times at which, because oh, otherwise you end up in a situation where you say, "Oh, I'd love to pair," and someone says, "I'd love to pair," and oh, what time's good for you? Well, I'm not sure. How about that next Thursday? Oh, that doesn't work for me, and it ends up being this kind of really long thing. So if you work out for you that there's a particular time that actually works for you to do pair programming, you can see here Pedro's run them. Uh, other people, who's this? Is Nathan has run one. Uh, George has run one there. Uh, Anna, Anant. So what people have been doing is saying, right, oh, there's a time that I know that I'm going to be available. Uh, and, the, and the thing is, there's generally, there's so many people around. Uh, if you post an event and say, like, I'm ready to pair program on this, that, and the other, if you say that enough in advance, you'll get three, four, five people come in. Uh, and really, that's the sort of, you know, what's ideal? You know, two people, three people, four people, you know, a few people. That's what you want to sit around and sort of uh, chat about what's going on with the homework, work out what's going on. Um, so you know, anyway, partly the reason for doing these sessions is to sort of you know, help familiarise people with the, the the Google Hangouts, the pair, the um, the um, I'm trying to be able to talk to me in Skype at the same time. It's uh, it's, 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 it's a MOOC. It's the brave new 21st century. There's 13,000 students all around. It's my brain is about to melt. No, no, it won't melt. I will keep it. I shall have some water and keep it cool. And um, yes, I will try and get back to the point that I was originally making, which was. Yes. Once you're sort of set up with this technology, um, you are in principle set free. You don't need me to kind of organise it. You can, in principle, just get um, you know uh, yourselves uh, organised and chat chatting with other people and, and get the huge benefits of, of being able to talk to another live person about your code. So anyway, that's probably enough about me on the hangout. I guess I will just do a little chat about the homework. This is, as I think probably most of you are experiencing, uh, a more challenging homework is an existing legacy app. Typo is a large thing. There's no way realistically that you can become an expert in this typo code in the time that's available. Um, and that may feel unfairly challenging. Um, but what it's um, really doing is trying to simulate the situation that you may find yourself in uh, as a software engineer where there is a very large code base that you can't you know, get all of it into your head, but you have to become familiar enough with parts of it in order to, uh, to be able to make changes and sort of do your job. So um, that's what's, you know, what's going on here. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's a challenge, but hopefully it's a good learning experience. 
So shall we, um, do people have particular questions about the homework, particular um, things they're stuck on, con particularly conceptually things, but we can get down into the nitty gritty. Um, anybody want to go first? Rob, Hi, I know. Sam. Yeah, you, Rob, you, you, you had a couple of questions. Yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah, it's um, when I've been trying to, to do things in the, uh, the model area, like mm -hmm. for example, when you when you merge with an ID, I was wanting to do a check when uh, to check that that ID actually existed. Yes. And uh, and it's doing a, a kind of like a find from the database. Yes. Uh, and every time it did that, it seemed to be uh, raising an exception. Okay. Um, sure. And it was then that well, the exception wasn't being rescued or whatever you have to do with exceptions. Sure. And and I was just wondering if that there was something set whereby you could change it so that it actually returned and then you could check if it's nil or something rather than it raising the exception at record that point. Yeah. Okay. Well did you uh, maybe in the other terminal window that you've got there you've got actually the exception that you're getting. Can we have a can we have a quick look at that maybe? Okay, how about we take So I, I, I assume I'm looking at the right screen here. I, I see what appears to be your vir virtual machine and you've got an SQL light um, interface there where you're looking at the contents of the database and then you've got Right, here we go. So, okay, so you've got like a, a merge command here and it's saying, couldn't find article with ID 77. Now, of course, it's just to put conceptually for people who maybe are very, very big, beginning of the homework, sort of the, the key thing that you're uh, adding to typo is the ability to merge two articles here. So, um, now, let's just kind of figure out for you, Rob, where you are. Now, so you've, you've I've checked you can deploy to Heroku, presumably. That's something that you, that was the first part of the homework, right? Yes, it, that was working okay. So it's actually on my you know, local copy. Yeah, and no, so you, uh, that, which is absolutely the right way to go. So you, you've checked that, that you've check, checking sort of but we yeah. got to through through the thing. So so and then so now you've written presumably some cucumber scenarios. Yeah. So so this is the kind of like the code that it's, it's trying to run to uh, see if there's. Right, right. Oh, oh, sure. Oh, sure. Well, and you'll forgive me for maybe taking your question, and, and, and we will try and answer the particular bit that you're focused on. But what I want to do is try and put this in the context of the, the workflow, because the, the crit critical thing, thing here in some ways is that you are making changes to your controller there, being driven first by cucumber scenarios and then by, um, spec, by specs. Um, so now presumably you... You started with making some cucumber uh, features, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then, I mean, this is one of the things I think is kind of is the, is sort of the critical take home from the behavior driven development is that you go through um, creating the, the cucumber scenarios and you get to the point where the uh, the cucumber scenarios are, are failing because there's some missing functionality uh, potentially in the controller, right? So you're showing us there the uh, scenario that you've got, and and then you started creating a controller spec to spec out that functionality? Yeah, well, I mean, the other problem I was finding with the Cucumber stuff was that, um, you know, to, to access certain URLs, as it were, on the uh, application, yes. you needed to know the ID. So you were writing things like um, um, articles, but yes. then to know which URL to go to, you have to... Um, Find out which ID that was in the database, and I, I was I couldn't get um, the find working for. Oh, okay. So, so is, is that is it, a right. cucumber? So, so that now, kind is, of is that actually the place that you're stuck on, or it's, it's, it's related? Is that is so, being able so to the, use the find mechanism? Go on. Yeah. So there's those two areas. Um, one is uh, you know you are creating. Um, Creating records through doing these sorts of things here. Yes, yes. Um, in, in Cucumber. <clears throat> yes. But to be able to go to the particular page, you need to go to go to know the ID. So you do, you do. That, yeah. Right, and and you can and you can get the ID. Um, for I mean, this is this is one of the things that yeah, that is, is potentially tricky. But th this is looking, you know, you're looking like you've got the right kind of thing here, which is which is good to see. But yeah, so you're doing things like I write the article that, and has these things. So you're obviously you're creating this now. Presumably, you created some steps to go along with that that actually implement that uh, in, in your web steps. You added some things to web steps RB. So you've yeah. got, for example, oh yes, I write article 
with so and so, and then you've got you go to the new article page, and I fill in the article title. Yes, 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 and press publish. Um, but this, oh, this is oh. where I was trying to find the articles. You know, right. To find them where the, the title, but these keep failing. These. Oh, no, th no th th those are failing for you, are they? Yes, because I, can't, I want to find the ID so I can go to the right page. Yes, yes, no, that, that, ma that makes sense, and and that should be possible to to do. And yeah, maybe right. we can look at. Um, well, m maybe if we. Um, come at it from, from, from this point. I see you've got a couple of debugger points in here. Um, if you um, run this uh, Cucumber scenario, can you get, do, do you find yourself getting into the debugger at, say, line 87? I think that would be a great thing for us to look at right now. Um, right. If you were able okay. to run that Cucumber scenario and get us to the debug, uh, the debug point. Great, great to see you using the debugger. I, I, I think that... Um, uh, the kind of combination of test-driven and debugger is, is very, very powerful for getting things done. One of the things that um, I think I, I, I can't emphasize enough to my students is that, um, uh, you know, is working on your, on your debug loop. If you've got a very, very big, uh, long set of um, tests running or whatever it happens to be, and you've got this, like, four-minute interval where you wait for the results of whatever change you make, then, it, then you're really in trouble by inserting a debug point and basically being able to try out those few little things there. As long as it's being driven by a test, then it's great. I think we've got somebody in um, IRC chat asking uh, if we can get Rob's audio boosted. I, I'm not sure that we... Uh, that we that could sit, speak a bit louder or sit closer to the microphone, maybe? The, you're using the, and the show me the page feature, which is fantastic. Um, that's uh, yeah. No, I, I think that, uh, thanks, Hank King. I think probably within the Hangout, there's good. There's also people who are who are listening on the broadcast remotely. Um, now, I noticed that you were running just a bundle exec cucumber there. Um, the, and of course, you can in principle just run only the individual scenario that you want to test, which can save you some time. Um, but you're in the debugger there, so we've got to this point here. So. Uh, web, web steps rb.88. So presuming that's the first debug point there, should we just go back to the code and re to refresh ourselves on uh, exactly where? Uh -huh. So you've got when I merge test one with test two, right? So you've got a, it hard coded here, and so you're you're trying to do this, you know, actually get the article out of the database. Um, yes, yeah, I, I did try it before with um, you know this sort of thing here, but I just oh, want oh, yeah. to make sure I've got the sequence. Oh, absolutely! Oh, no, no, that, that's definitely the right way to go. Yeah. To sort of, if you're unclear about any of these things, you want to be. And the, the thing is, again, about the debug, I guess not necessarily the loop, but closing down to so that the, the number of things varying um, are absolutely minimized. But so, if for example, then if you go back to the debugger and you hit, um, I think. Uh, well, you could just even type. Uh, well, I'm always tempted here to just type IRB in the debugger, and that takes us into a mode where we can interact with it a bit more simply. So, do you want to just type IRB there, and that puts us into a mode there uh, where we can just. You could, for example, you could just now um, type the art. Now, presumably, you're, you're familiar with. You can use the Control Shift C and V to copy and paste within the um, terminal yeah. window there. Do you want to just copy and paste that article dot where? Title um, equals test one there. Um, oh, okay. So if you, oh no, well you can actually do it. For, you you can you can copy that from within. You've got it in the. Uh, you've got it in that window itself. You can see it says. Uh, oh just, yes. Mm -hmm. Just before yeah. IRB, it was showing us what the next line would be like. Yeah, well, they so hit hit return there, and let's see what this does for you. Um, so that appears to have given you. An article one hyphen underscore record. So if you type article one underscore record dot id now, hmm. Do you want to just scroll up in that window and let's see what? We're not seeing the full error. So you want to scroll back up there. What's happening? Yeah. Undefined uh, article one. What did we? No, I, th I think it's. What did you actually call the variable that you? You called it article one underscore record. So article, article one yeah, underscore sorry. record. Uh, dot id. Yeah, the, the sort of the, the stack trace, which can be so useful in some situations, is. Uh, 
No, that's interesting. Well, just type uh, there, article one. That's if you just type article one underscore record and hit return, what does that give you? Because I, I, it seemed like it was giving you the um, article one underscore record. Right. Ah, oh, you've got sorry. So you've got an array of articles there, rather than a. Um, if you notice the response there, it's actually in a. So I think what you'll need to do is article one underscore record, and then open uh, the square brackets and do a zero inside it, and then hit a dot id. Uh, there you go. Three. Oh, that's the three. So I think if if we go back to your original code now, uh, we can see what's happening when you're doing this article dot where. That's doing a search, and it might match more than one thing. So uh, it's going it's to return an array. Um, I think uh, what you, uh, an alternate active record thing that you might want to use there, which you could actually try out the debug. If you try, if you go to the debug prompt now again, uh, we'll go back to the debug prompt. And I think everybody watching can see how powerful this is. We're, we're sort of, rather than being in the forums or in chat, you know, we're here getting to the bottom of the. So if you type, um, if you if you get get rid of that, let's just. So this is the now thing about being on a. Um, yeah, so you can see the site's an array of length one. If you if if you do capital A article, and then you do dot find by title, so it's find underscore by underscore title. Uh, and then you can type in like the test one or whatever that uh, I think I think there was no was there a space well you, you probably know better than me you can hit return there uh, yeah so we can see there that actually gives us back the article ID itself so you could just hit the up cursor if you wanted there and type dot ID and that will be taking us very quickly to the um, ID that you need yeah does it, does that does that help at all um, yeah. Uh, so, so this is actually giving me a. Um, it's giving me a, an array of size one. Then it is giving you an array of size one. It's um, yeah. It's 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 you know that that where method. It's it's you know querying query the database and it's looking for any articles that have uh, a title of test one. And so it might return two or three or four. But it, in fact, it's it's just returning returning one, and and so that's kind of a uh, you know uh, idiosyncrasy of the different active record um, methods there. I'll just mention some people are saying that the, the, the they're getting the audio is kind of coming and going. Um, I think you know obviously there are many. I'm here in Japan, the rest of you around the world. Um, I am recording live on my side, so if if people do lose audio, they can at least review the live video from my side. Uh, I'm not sure how well it's working with the broadcast. For other people watching in the cloud, um, but yeah, so you can see in this environment. I mean, I, I, when I do IRB, I don't get this, um, uh, you know, quite so irritatingly. You know, the, the the prompt there is is changed. So so you know, not necessarily the best. Environment. But so you can. The other place to experiment for this is is the Rails console. Have you have you tried the Rails console, Rob? Yes. Uh -huh. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So so yeah. There's of course. You know, if this ends up being really cluttered and so on, you can be doing the same sort of things from the from the Rails console. But d don't feel bad. I think this is a you know, I, I was you know as you saw there immediately telling you to type .id and seeing the same error. Um, it's you know in the absence of those you know, it's, it's a really subtle thing. Like are those square, what I would call brackets or square parentheses as they might say in the US. Um, on the beginning and end of that thing, and that's the only indication that you're getting there that what's coming back from the article where is actually an array rather than an instance of the individual the class. So, but um, okay. How, how do I get that, back to go, the? Go on, how, go on. How, how do I get back to the debugger then? Or do I oh, so, so now you, if you type exit here, then it will exit the e, erb the irb mode, and so yeah. now you're back in the debugger and you could step through. But but now we this is I think the particular power of the debugger here because. You can see how, if you're running cucumber tests or or specifications or whatever, um, you could be making little changes in your code in the editor, like saying, "Okay, well, I'm going to use where, or I'm going to try find, or I'm going to try this, or I'm going to do that," and then, you know, rerunning and taking you, depending on the speed of your machine and everything, five uh, seconds, fifteen seconds, a minute, or to get back to see the consequences of the changes that you made. Whereas here, particularly in the IRB mode of the debugger. You can try out precisely 
the thi- oh, okay, what happens if I need to do this? And this is, I often find myself in the debugger. I'm in there, I'm in the IRB mode, I work out the precise active record syntax or whatever it happens to be that I need, and then I'm like, right, well, there's no point in me continuing the debugger because I know that the next sets of things, so here, um, I mean, you, you could just type cont and it would continue and get stop at the next debreak point, debreak point, uh, break point, or, you know, step through or whatever, um, and so on. But I would be tempted to exit out from here and go back into your web steps and replace, you know, the article where or with whatever is the appropriate active record uh, incantation that you need, and then and then start again. But but it, but uh, yeah, I think that's the real real huge power of the debugger there. So you you, you get the adapter there. But we, we know so we, now we know why that that failed. Um, there you go. Uh, just while you're doing that, uh, Han King is asking me about the time in Japan. Um, it is uh, five minutes before six. Here it is. It is. It is very early. I am. Um, I'm an early riser generally, and jet lag does tend to help with that. But yes, I was up at uh, before 4 a.m. this morning to make sure I was ready for this. Um, uh, re- ready for this event. Um, but you know, yeah, yeah. So moving forward, uh, I'm, I'm going to be transferring back to the London time zone uh, in about a week. And uh, yes, I'll, I'll be you know, be trying to encourage as many um, uh, hangouts as, as possible. You know, scaffold you. You know. Um, I'm, I'm sorry I haven't had more time this summer to run to run uh, hangouts, um, but I'm I'm very impressed with everybody's hard work in the in the forums and in the the IRC chat and you know really these these MOOCs gain value from community you know from us pulling together and, and sort of helping each other. Um, so anyway, um, I think we might have resolved at least part of um, uh, Rob's issue there. If anybody else has got a particular question or issue relating to the homework, um, uh, you're sort of percolating around in your mind, um, do feel free to type that into the, um, the group chat and uh, we'll try and get to as many uh, of those as we can. Um, so you know, just forgive me Rob, um, we'll, we'll stick with you for the, for the moment. Um, the, I guess I, I'm sort of seeing the web step, the, you just while that's running in, in the background, if you, let's go and look at the web steps for a moment. And uh, this is the other thing is of course as as you know even with the best use of the debugger sometimes the cucumber it takes a little while to start up um, sort of reflecting on a um, getting into this ability to like rather than sitting there saying right I must I must see the next thing uh, going into sort of a reflective mode here I'm just looking at the bigger context the web this is when I merge test 1 with test 2 and you're grabbing both of the article IDs this web step if we go back up to your merge articles feature um, uh, that, this, that is using this web step. Uh, I guess what we're hoping ultimately is that when I merge test one and test two, that um, that will actually fire off the activity of doing the merge. Um, right. So at the moment you're just testing that you're getting the IDs. Okay, fair enough. I'm, see, I'm seeing the bigger picture there now. If we if we go back to your um, cucumber, by the way, that the um, sorry the, the terminal. One of the things. Um, that you can, as it's still in the debugger there, I guess as you can do continue to make see, check that those, that those work. Mm. Looks like they are. And of course it's failing because it hasn't actually done the merge. But one thing I, I really want to show you there, just to potentially save you time, is if you go back to the terminal window, um, what, you, what, you, what you can, if you, if you press the up, if you press the up button, uh, just to get your previous command back, the cucumber command, if you now press space and you type uh, feature, and uh, then you and then hit tab. Um, it should do auto complete on the features or features directory. And then if you type me, which is like from me, and then hit tab there. And then if you hit colon, uh, the colon symbol, and then seventeen one one seven, what you'll find is that running that 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 will run only that precise uh, scenario on line seventeen of that file. So if you hit return now. Um, that will do exactly the same thing that you did before, except that it will not worry about trying to run any of the other cucumber um, uh, features or even any of the other scenarios and that thing. Now you want to use that power to, you know, with 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 a certain degree of care, because of course part of the reason that these things are set up by default to run all of the tests is the reason that we have all of these test frameworks in place, all these behavior development frameworks in place, is that as we're making individual changes, we want to be able to see if we're breaking any long-term dependencies. However, when you're kind of like stuck on that little one thing and you're just trying to get it to work in the debugger, um, those can kind of get uh, in in the way. 
they can get they can really get in the way. So I, I think kind of a, a what's the word not serendipitous uh, an expedient that would be a better better I think uh, an expedient use of um, you know running the tests on batch and running precise individual tests is uh, a really valuable and powerful tool uh, or approach overall. There we go. So anyway, um, yeah, it seems like that that's worked. Um, is there anything else that the related that we can help you with, Rob, or anything from anybody else, uh, please do type in a chat. Anybody else who's interested? How, 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 how is this all making sense to you at the moment, Rob? Yes, yes, it's helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll try that out and uh, make sure it goes okay. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I, I mean, it just it, it does seem to still uh, crash out with that. Well, um, I think it, well, yes, it does, and that's that's expected. Um, I think you're getting the correct um, uh, you're getting the correct art article ID. I mean, your article one underscore record IDs. Uh, I think if if you if you mm -hmm. let it, um, I think they're in the debugger of your. You want to go back to um, the terminal? Yeah, yeah. Go go go, go ahead. Let's. Now, have we actually definitely run through? Mm. What uh, I would do to continue. For the, from the first one, I did the continue there. The, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I think the the continue there may may have stepped into it's it's, it's come up saying stepmother dot after step. I'm not sure that necessarily the C is doing. You want to type next? Um, uh -huh. and and now let's see what we've got. Yeah, I mean, I, I tend to be only just moving around in the IRB. I think if you continue, if you if you just continue, I think you're, you're seeing that the error that it's getting is. I don't think it's related to looking up the article ideas, but but hit continue, uh, or, or I'm always uh, yeah. There you go. If you now scroll up, if you now scroll up, the the error here is not arising from the I merge test one with test two, right? Yeah. Independently of whatever's happening with Article One ID and just that and the other, that's another story. Uh, right, the yes. thing where it's failing here is that on the, then I should see there once were two cats from Kilkenny. So that uh, I mean, and again, the length of the error message here is is, is um, uh, something to be careful of because it's you, you you could certainly be forgiven for thinking, oh right, the thing that I'd um, uh, you know uh, the thing the, the thing that I'm Doing there is um, is failing when actually that's the next cucumber step on. There's actually somebody in there yeah. chat, chat that was Risa was asking about the the DISP, which is basically when you're in the debugger to display a certain variable. I, I actually end up finding myself not so familiar with the particular Ruby debugger uh, things. I, I tend to almost always go straight into IRB and be mucking around with things and then drop out again. Um, but I, I think for for example, um, if you what I would be tempted to do. Um, uh, is if you go back to your code momentarily, um, Rob, is it, I'd remove the first debugger point. Um, I can do it, but can't I? Yes, I'm. What are you doing? So P article ID is. Yes, I'm not sure where that will end up necessarily showing in the, in in this environment. But yes, you could certainly try that. What I would personally normally be doing is anyway, that's that's a reason why I. I think error there, but anyway. Yeah, I haven't worked out why that happens. I, I think that's probably that. Are, are you sharing your um? Code between um, your external computer and the in and the VM. Yes, I am. Yeah, that that that. I, 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 yeah, I, yeah, I tend to recommend against that. Actually, I I, I find that that generally leads to um, to complications. Obviously, it's it's very convenient in um, you know one way or another. Uh, ultimately, you know, um, you know, moving beyond this course, one needs to move um, out of out of VMs to get the. The highest speed, or, or at least onto EC2. But um, so let's just have a look there. Oh, so Hanking, let's just see. I see other people talking in chat there. Um, Sergio is saying it's helpful if the hangout was on Thursday. I'm sure there'll be other hangouts going on. Um, 
So it's there you go. Yes. Those, yeah. Yep, it does. Yeah. So I, I think what was happening that maybe again I, I can't claim to be uh, an expert in the Ruby debugger. It, it's very easy to get into sort of odd states in the Ruby debugger, um, depending upon what's going on. Um, but so yes, so I, so I think that the the article ID lookup is. Um, uh, Easy. No, Hank King's just asking. You know, certainly, by all means, carry on chatting in the group chat. We've got all sorts of chats going on now. It's it's, it's become a very chat-centric course. We've got the IRC <laughs> chat. We've got the Skype chat. Uh, but that's what it's all about. It's all about you know. It's not. It ultimately, it's about the peer interaction that I think the value is, is derived is derived from. Um, so, and then I was saying, Hank King Tan was saying, just got Hiroko to serve my typo blog. Just trying to write the article merging, merging feature feature now. Yeah, no, Hank King, that's uh, absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, so that so now if you t type to continue there, Rob, I think what we would see is we would it would carry on, uh, and then it would of course this error as we describe it is this yeah. is related to, you know, the the, the, the subsequent next, thing because the currently the merge yeah. test with one test one with test two doesn't actually do the thing that we're we're saying so because you obviously and sensibly because you were you were stuck on that issue of trying to get the IDs, but hopefully yeah. that's um, um, you know, that's yeah, unstuck that's, you slightly. That, that has indeed, because now I've got the IDs, I can work out what page it is, I can put the ID into the yeah, field, and absolutely. then uh, go from there. So then the next step should really come as a matter of course then, once I can do that. Yeah, yeah, great, great. Good, okay. so many thanks there, Sam, that's been really useful. No, 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 my pleasure, and do, um, you know, if, if you're, uh, don't, don't feel you have to wait for another Hangout from me to, to um, look at those sorts of issues. Um, you know, those who've got the we've got the pair programming uh, G plus community. Um, other you know other students will be coming in and, and making hangouts. You know, obviously people at different places in the different different homeworks. But I hope everybody you know can feel that they can um, they don't have to you know they can pay pay it forward as well. I think it, sometimes it's it's just as helpful to be explaining uh, to someone else on a bit that you've previously worked on as it is to be getting help on your own problem. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I just don't hesitate to ask for help. Really, that's my general. Uh, suggestion to everybody. Um, and and, if, and as well, we've got um, we had uh, Doug and Han King. Uh, I think Han King and Sergio are saying that they sort of, they're just starting, so they're in an earlier point in the homework. Um, uh, anybody else have questions? And indeed, actually, I, I I can see my my Skype buzzing away. There's a big chat going on for people who are watching in the broadcast. If anybody in the broadcast area has a question. Um, that they type into, they want to, I mean, I can sort of, it's difficult for me to follow <laughs> all of the chats at the same time, but if we can um, work out, if anybody has any other um, issues that they're stuck on with the homework, any questions they have conceptually about the homework, any, in fact, and, you know, I, I would probably go for another sort of 23 minutes here, if, if there aren't any more questions about this particular homework, any questions about the course, you know, broaden it out, um, do, do let me know. Um, I'm just, there's some other people trying to add, I'm sorry, in the background, going to add uh, some other people to the group chat. Um, brains, really, to uh, properly manage all of these things. We've got John Moorbacker is uh, listening to the live broadcast. I'm just adding him to the to the Skype chat. I'm going to go on the IRC. Um, where Michael Smith, one of our world TAs, Mr. Johns as well, uh, another world TA uh, in there, helping people real time in uh, in IRC. Uh, have I not? Skype is uh, freezing up on me as I try to add John Moorbacker to the edX chat. He's, he's in there. Um, hopefully other people will greet him. Um, our Hank King, um, Sam Rob, able to give us some tips on starting homework one. Um, well, I, I, I would immediately say, Hank King, um, critical thing is make sure that you um, you ha have got a fresh and up-to-date copy of the typo. Uh, we did identify um, an er you know, a couple of minor errors very early on to do with changes on Heroku and their Postgre setup. So um, one thing to do is if you cloned um, the, the SARS book typo repo, then do do git pull to make sure you've got the very latest of that. If you forked it, um, you can do an update to that, but it is slightly more complicated to do. Um, if you um, look up on the window here, this actually is. If you're, if you, I, I think the whole forking thing on GitHub is absolutely fantastic. But if you, if you do a search uh, merge with 
about how to uh, you know, fork or, you know, get mode up straight. Actually, in the fork, or, uh, syncing of fork actually really is what we want, isn't it? Um, here, so, that, so this is this syncing a fork article from GitHub is really useful. But basically, uh, annoying. You would have thought that when you fork something, automatically, you know, the information about that thing being a, um, you know, the the original repo that you took something from, that that should be upstream, and you should just be able to merge. But the, unfortunately, with Git to Power Tool, um, you need to actually sort of say to Git, okay, this was the person that I forked from, uh, and then in principle, you're able to do this Git fetch upstream and then um, git merge upstream master. But th this article here has a complete... Um, but a very useful skill uh, use generally. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, that, you know, that, that certainly before Split Hammock 1, do make sure that you're updated to the very um, latest uh, type, the type, type of repo. And then getting started, I think... You know, just check the stuff is working on. You know, Heroku. You want to make sure you're able to, to deploy that. Um, you know, and then working through. I mean, I think my the biggest challenge I would say with well, there, there's two critical challenges here with this homework. One is is just the size of the typo code base. So do give yourself time to look through. Maybe use uh, Railroady. I've maybe have I got that running? Maybe to um, inspire you now, which is I can find the right virtual machine here. Uh, um, and I'll make sure that you can all see it on screen share. Um, so uh, allows you to um, uh, there it is. Let me change my um, screen share around. So instead of my uh, you know, hello, what is me? Look, look, it's a real person, not a bot yet. Eventually, that is my plan to replace myself entirely with a bot. Well, ninety-five percent with a bot. Five percent, maybe can't. Be. Anyway. Um, so uh, we've got to find the VM. We've got to find the right VM. Uh, that's not the right thing. Is it not going to actually show them to me? See, I, at the moment, I so I'm sort of scrolling all through my. I'm just going to share my desktop, aren't I? Oh, well. For the world. So I'm I'm sharing now. Um, this is a the views that you would get from um, the railroady uh, gem. Um, this is here. This is the um, complete sort of. Um, View of the database, uh, database models. I, I don't actually know if anybody can see. I'll switch back to, but then it goes away. I, I, but, uh, anyway, the, the the railroad gem is a great way of um, looking through, you know, this somewhat might be otherwise um, what's a, a obscure kind of a, having it all in text form is sometimes quite challenging. Um, so you get and you get it little summarized. This is all the models. You know, from the the typo Rails app, and then it also has you know controller diagrams and, and this and that. So that can be handy. I mean, um, it it requires a few other bits and pieces of installation. If I go uh, over now, you should be able to see this. But if we look for, uh, we can see. Is it going to be slow? Um, there's a few bits and pieces that you need to do to install. Like there's this graph uh, graph viz thing that you would need to do. Um, the instructions here uh, seem to be specific for OS X. Uh, you would need to do um, sudo. Uh, it, well, my brain's apt get install graphviz, uh, and then the rest of these. But you may also need to install the Chrome browser in order to open. I can get it to work in Firefox. So, so anyway, I mean, that's that's. You know, it's not certainly not worth burning too much time on if you get. Uh, you know, might be might be worth a look, but uh, my, my, the, the key thing I was trying to say there was um, give yourself time to look through the typo uh, system. I think you know one of the cha particular challenging things here is like okay, we want to do this merging operation. Where do we need to do that in the code? Um, you know, it's challenging homework. Don't leave it until the last minute. You want to you know up front say give yourself a session, you know, an hour or so, uh, or maybe even two. To allow yourself to look through the code, become familiar with it, try, try and uh, you know work out where you think the change points are going to need to be, uh, and then the, the the other thing, and this is this is challenging, is, is saying right is you know the temptation it will be strongly to just uh, use your cucumber features and uh, uh, avoid using specs, but actually you know having got the cucumber features failing, you then want to move to a state where you write okay well failing cucumber feature there's a feature missing that I've described at the kind of 
top behavior level, then you want to move um, on to right now, I want to spec that out and drive that uh, with, the, with the specs, and it will be easier in the long run, but it's, it's very counterintuitive. So, and that's probably far too much of me um, warbling on there. Um, I guess I will just stop my screen share briefly to avoid the infinite regress and falling into the... There we go. Uh, but yeah, uh, Doug could see the UML diagram. Uh, cool. Okay, so at least some people could see some of that. Sometimes I'm never sure. I was recording on this side, so... Um, do we have... Uh, I'm going to go and check Skype. Do, 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 does anybody else have any... No questions? Uh, ERB. Uh, uh, right, so John, John Morbacker was asking about ERB, which, of so course, um, in the course so far, uh, Amanda focused on Tamil markup language. ERB, actually, that was when I first started Rails some five years ago now. Is it more than that? I don't know. Um, the um, got other people asking. Um, yeah, that that was what I was originally using. I find ERB to be, you know, quite straightforward. In as much as it's HTML with little snippets of Ruby code in it, and so I find that actually easier to use than it, than Haml. Of course, in this course, you've been introduced to Haml first. So moving to ERB, which Typo is using, can be a bit a bit of a switch. But I think the key thing with ERB is just to remember that it, it's basically HTML. And then uh, the, the, the tricky thing there is dealing with these, um, the little, uh, the, the syntax for it. And I forget, I mean, I have to go and look at it myself. Um, oh, did I go and have a look at a view that's got some, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's this, it is a percentage sign. That was what I was wondering about. But there's this kind of percentage, you know, Ruby stuff thing. No, it's muting me. I should I just type this also into um uh where's it type chat, which must be over here. Um this is it. more backer. Um the, the 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 key thing is whether you've got this equal sign or not. That's the key thing that can trip you up. Um if you've got the equal sign, then the Ruby stuff that you have in the ERB little kind of angle bracket things will be displayed. If you don't have that equal sign, then it's not displayed, um, and it will it will it will, um, it will it'll run the Ruby code, but it won't print anything out. But that, and I think that's the main uh, goal, really, with ERB. But otherwise, it should be fairly straightforward. Uh, okay, so. So uh, Hank King was just talking about railroady. Uh, you don't put bundle exec in front of the gem. Um, you can, in principle, avoid doing gem install railroady and just put the um, the gem the railroady gem in your gem file and uh, then do bun bundle install. Um, bundle exec is usually something that you would be putting in front of rake uh, and and ra possibly even rails. Uh, yeah, uh, is 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 the way to go there. Uh, bu bundle is a whole other bundle of fun, uh, which could be the topic of uh, a short course. And John Mocker, yeah, the, so I think that that's the equivalent in Hamill, John, is the, the presence or absence of the minus minus sign, although I have to confess. Uh, yeah, the, the rest of the, and as Risa points out, the, the rest of the code is general HTML. For those of you in the Google Hangouts, these people talking in the, in the, um, in the Skype, Skype chat. Um, yes, or Hank King, going back to the gem file issue, you can do a sort of pseudo gem install there already. That'll make it available to everything. And then although you, but you, the thing is you have to put it in the gem file as well for the rake thing to be able to access it. Um, yeah, good stuff. Um, so, yeah, there is... Uh, yeah, so Sergio... Yeah, the, are you in the... So this is... Let's, let's see. Um, Sergio... I don't, I don't know if I have you in the Skype chat room in, in, um, uh, in Skype, Serge. Um, that's something... If, if people do want to be in the Skype chat room, then do con contact me on my Skype username. That require kind of a you know uh, input from me for that to happen. Um, I guess actually, since in the remaining time, if there are not other questions about the homework, we might just review some of the new features of the course. We've talked about pair programming already. Obviously, we're here. You're you know you can see how you can all go away now and merrily pair and, and group and, and you know twos and threes and fours and fives. So all good. Um, we might just talk about. 
um, the new chat feature that we have. Um, if I go to so just share my desktop, it's probably easiest, and go over window. So that was you may you may now have noticed that all through the the site in various places we've now got this uh, embedded IRC chat. Uh, and Derek Coetzee has been working fantastically hard uh, to get this all working, and he's even got it working with something that the IRC doesn't usually have, which is history. So, for example, if we go, actually, have I got another? Here we go. Yeah. So here's another place here. As you're going through um, the lectures, there, I'm, let's go and get. Uh, let's go and look at the video here, um, which now supports times two speed. I hope. Uh, there we go. Hey, Armando. Um, but so, what's you know, we can see people here chatting away, um, you know, uh, just, you know, and having fun and connecting with each other. And, um, you know, it's automatically pulling in your edX login. So you're identified there by your edX, edX login name. Uh, there's, there's history. All of it's being recorded, so you can look through that. Um, oh, no. Ah, yeah. uh, is the broadcast start seeing right like that? Ah, okay. And then, I, then if I get... Okay, so I think that was, that was Risa on the broadcast asking, yeah, so I'd left the screen showing um, uh, Rob's screen, and people on the broadcast were, <laughs> that didn't have the ability to switch screens, so my apologies there. Um, all of the stuff is, of course, being recorded live on my side, so that will go out later on. But um, anyway, so as I was saying, you know, do check out this IRC chat. I'm really hoping that we can link the IRC chat and the Skype chat. Uh, both have some great Features, um, you know, we've got World TAs monitoring both uh, both chats. Um, particularly Michael Smith, who's doing it. Um, you know, there's just a, well, a big call out to Michael Smith, Manuel, Fernando, uh, Samuel Lau. Um, you know, really appreciate. It. But you know, and, and everybody else is putting. You know, I'm, I'm just particularly seeing. There's actually for the World TAs. Do come on. Do come on Skype. Um, that's partly why those those names are big in my mind at the moment because they're coming on Skype and telling me about all the issues they're finding. Um, but so you can also, you know. You, May not, you know, you're busy watching a video. You can. We've got this new chat tab. If you open up, it gives you a big view of um, the chat. You can also connect to the chat from with your own IRC client. Um, and there's a lot of them about IRC's uh, venerable uh, chatting protocol. But you can see it all there. Uh, I'm regularly monitoring that uh, chat room as well. I've got. I can just colloquy. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to disable the leaves and joins. That's become less useful. This is XChat Aqua, and so that gives me, um, you know, uh, all of the um, the chat like you would see in the in the web chat. But uh, if you if you if you already have a favorite IRC client, then um, we've got um, all the information there about how to connect to it. Um, and this is another great aspect of the community. Ultimately, one day maybe we will be able to properly merge G Plus and all the chats and the Hangouts and so on. Um, here. If anybody had any other uh, questions about this is this is the Skype chat room, by the way we've got 191 people. This is a, um, you know people in the current instance of edX uh, class and, and alumni from the previous six or seven instances of of, of it, all in there having fun, um, you know chatting away. We do love our live chat. Um, got uh, boom, 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 boom. yeah, I think that's up to date. I also have chat rooms. We have um, unofficial class projects uh, that are going on. Um, if people don't have um, any other, uh, the here, oh yes, yeah. So Hang King, it's um, yeah. Th this is what chat in general is. It is difficult to um, you know, drill through it to find out everything that's going on. Um, that's something that we are working on, is the ability to sort of automatically classify, you know, important. Elements in there and pull those out into, um, you know, the forum or whatever. Rest assured that any of the really critical issues that come up, when people identify problems with the autograders, the World TA is bringing that to my attention, and uh, we're doing our best to uh, to fix it. Uh, we do have we're using Pivotal Tracker, which is going to be talked about later in the, on in the course, to track all of the bugs uh, from you know and issues and suggestions for improvements for all of this is 169.2, is that the right one? Story, no, that's local support. Uh, yeah, so um, so um, this is also something that, you know, you um, 
and uh, give you access to um, you know uh, beta test uh, more of the more of the upcoming course and um, you know contribute to trying to help help improve it. We you know really love you know all of your, your input on it. Um, lot, you know lots of things going on. I, I think that the big thing I, that I want to connect this to in the long term is is um, uh, you know, doing real-world projects. I, I think, you know, the, this typo one is the closest that we get to within this course of it being kind of a real-world project, but it's still somewhat artificial. It's an old version of typo. Everybody's working on the same feature. We're not really collaborating with each other. And that's the key value, I would say, in software engineering is working in, working in teams, and that's coming up in, uh, I think, next week's lectures. Um, if you do want to practice your team skills, we do have a series of... Um, uh, do have a series of... Um, uh, you know, active projects. Um, this is one actually that we've built. This is um, our community network. Um, this, this is, we have an open source project called Local Support, um, which has been run for Pivotal Tracker and and so on. But uh, that's um, something that's, that we've been running over the last um, almost a year now. Um, that's one of a number of unofficial class projects. Um, EduChat, EduChat has now gone active. It's gone active because we have. For team members, so we've we've got a number that you could be contributing to once you've got one six nine two out out the way. I'll just post the different uh, training. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Pedro, you attended the yeah. So every every wow. every Monday we have um, meetings for um, these agile projects. So we've got local support. And that's been working with a live uh, client, a charity group in London, and we, over the course of several months, um, uh, Pair Pro, you know, this this site, this is a live rail site, um, was built by Pair Programming, all, all alumni from the edX uh, SaaS course. Um, but we've now got other projects. There's the you know, autograders have been worked on. We've got a peer-to-peer -peer scheduling framework. Um, the EduChat system is, of course, the IRC thing that you're you're, you're seeing, um, or at least <laughs> that it's fallen into that into that scope. Um, yeah, and we do have, so as well as the um, pair programming community, we also have, um, there is an edX G plus uh, community for SaaS, um, which is which is worth checking. And we do um, announce the Agile project meeting. So all of those um, class projects uh, are still unofficial. Hopefully I'm going to get... Um, yeah, we've got the um, edX... Use uh, Google Hangouts every week to uh, and um, yeah, to just you know, jump in and it's it's great fun and uh, you know we will that we you know we organize and pair program and do completely online and uh, we have a lot of fun with that. So I, I think we're coming up. You know, it's it's been an hour. I, I think uh, <laughs> I could probably do with some something with caffeine in it. Uh, I don't know about any of you. Um, let me I guess bring off the screen share on my side. And um, and uh, here we are. So, um, any any final questions or thoughts or comments from anybody before we wrap up for today? Just go and check in chat. I'm I'm guessing that's a that's a no. Um, Sergio was just asking there about uh, sorry, Hank King was asking about getting loading chat. Um, the uh, the you know the embedded IRC chat is. You know, bleeding edge currently under development. Um, you know, we're very excited to have it in there. Uh, you know, apologies in advance for any speed bumps that that happen. Um, it's uh, you know, we're, we're doing our best to make it all it all it all work well. Uh, but you know, don't hesitate to get in touch if, if you find any issue. You know, we'll jump on it. And we'll we'll tears. again. The um, Skype chat room or the um, IRC chat room are both. Are both uh, the... Let's see if there's any questions in the. No, no questions in the IR. Um, yeah, that's, that's good. Right, great. Thanks, guys. You know, so pleased to be able to, to do this. Looking forward to doing more in future. And just to, you know, don't don't be strangers. You know, uh, looking for. You know, but best of luck with homework one one. And um, I will try and run another thing like this for homework one two next week. I'm going to be doing this the transition to to London. So um, we'll see. I'll probably be awake in the middle of the night in um, the UK. We'll do it then or something. All right. Great, thanks, guys. I can end, wrap up the um, the end broadcast thing here. Bye, bye to all the viewers out there. Thanks for joining us for the broadcast. Woohoo!